Hello and welcome to Defect of the Month, brought to you by the NPL Defect Database. My name's Bob Willis and each month we'll look at process defects that you might see during manufacture. The Defect Database also gives you the opportunity of downloading all of the technical reports free of charge, which again picks up on some of the process defects we're discussing. Cracking on single-sided printed circuit boards again is probably more common than on plated through hole boards and when you get a crack in a joint it may be because of the change in the alloy where lead free is not as ductile as tin lead however there must have been some mechanical strain applied to the component joint or PCB during assembly operation or during operation of the product in the field. A couple of important things is to look at the hole to lead ratio. If you have a very large hole and a very small pin, the solder has to span the gap between those two surfaces. So consequently the mechanical strength of the joint is reduced. As you reduce the volume of solder between those two surfaces, again the joint strength is reduced. If you get movement, expansion and contraction of the component body against the PCB surface, again this will lead to cracking in the solder joint. So you've got to look at how you design a single sided printed circuit board and also its operation environment. But remember, as I said, the hole to lead ratio is particularly important because it does it define the volume of solder which is actually obtained during the wave soldering or selective soldering process.